Hey, it's Minecraft Beer Travels. I'm Andrew from Taihei Yoga, and we're joined by... Hi, I'm Andrew Conlin. I'm the Director of Brewing Operations at Heretic. You have a really nice name. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, unfortunately, Jamil couldn't be here this year, but we hey have there. the next best person, the <laughs> Director of... Brewing Bre Operations. So, we wanted to ask you as a brewer and someone who has studied under Jamil a bit. Sure. Uh, we know, we talked earlier with the Dick from Crucible about the basics of how to get started with home brewing and how to improve your technique. Okay. We talked to Jamil about recipes. Yes. Like he said, literally, everything in his book, he said, brew it all. If you want to become a better brewer, yes. learn how to brew beer, good beers, mm -hmm. brew from his book. Obviously, he wanted to sell his book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we talked about wanting a new book from him, but that's going to take some time. In terms of somewhat more advanced steps, so in the Crucible, with Crucible, we talked about what? Uh, fermentation, fermentation temperature. Fermentation temperature, cleaning first, mm -hmm. and oxidization and avoiding that. Yes. Beyond that, any other tips for home brewers that you would recommend who are getting started out with? Yeah, so uh, the way that I became successful as a home brewer is just, just like any other industry or any, anything, whether it's sports or whatever, it's just practice, practice, practice. The same can be said about mm. home brewing. It's brewing beers over and over and over again. Uh, before I was at Heretic, I was at More Beer, which is a very large uh, homebrew supply store, uh, homebrew supply company in the U.S. And it really truly came down to just brewing beers over and over and over again, dialing in your your homebrew practices, doing all what Dick was talking about, being clean and fermenting properly. But really, it's Something that I love about homebrewing is why I'm so excited about it is you can just brew the same thing over and over again and then tweak little things so you truly find out what you like. Um, there's a lot of styles out there and a lot of uh, strong opinions and yeah. it really truly comes down to what you enjoy and finding, you know, dialing that in and just keep continuing to brew. How often do you recommend people to brew? Uh, there's a balance, obviously. Uh, well, but as, not, as not worrying about like better halves and so on. Yeah, I mean, the issue becomes if you're brewing too much, obviously you're producing too much beer. Mm. Um, so as long as you have a lot of friends um, that you can bring over and try the beers with, then I would say brew as much as you can. I mean, honestly, what I would do as a home brewer, would, I would brew a 20-gallon batch. I would split that into four mm. five-gallon carboys. I would do something like maybe I want to see uh, different hops. Let's try just a simple single IPA, six percent, and then let's try single dry hopping and single, um, yeah, single dry hopping with Columbus, Mosaic, Citra, and whatever the new experimental hop is, and then just keep a record of it. Mm. I have, I have a uh, binder at my house that I've had since 2007, and it has a breakdown of every single bit of information that I ever found out and honestly you know obviously I, I director of brewing opera operations at Heretic I still reference that I go back mm. and I'm like what hop should we use what did I enjoy about that yeast um, keeping your notes and whatnot yes. from when you were drinking and it it's, and it's really I, I there can be some chaos to being a home brewer of you know changing four different variables but it mm. truly comes down it's a science you know you're just trying to figure out what do you enjoy and what is interesting about all those different, you know. So you absolutely recommend putting, say, a big batch, split it up for fermentation and yeah. play with small variables one at a time, yes. kind of. Yes, it's just, yeah, just like anything else, you'll become better the more you really, you know, drink the beer and try new things. What was one thing that Jamil taught you so, that you couldn't learn from homebrewing itself? That's a good question. So. My first day at Heretic, I have a vivid memory of the first conversation I had with Jamel, and he mentioned this one thing. He said there's three important things with running a professional brewery, and this applies to a home brewer as well. Number one, safety. Mm. Number two, um, happy employees, which I guess still applies, but number three is brewing great beer, and it's in that order. Number mm -hmm. one, there's a lot of dangers with running a professional brewery. Same thing as a home brewer, dealing with, you know, blowing up yeah, beer, pre pre high, high pressures, <laughs> hot temperatures, chemicals. Same thing applies for a home brewer. It's just being really careful and safe. Um, obviously, being happy is something that everybody will strive for. But the third one, brewing great beer, is something I've tr 
completely taken to heart. Mm. And that truly comes down to, uh, I think he said, uh, anyone can brew good beer. It really takes a lot of effort to brew great beer. And that, that's just, there's a hundred variables that go into brewing a beer, whether you're on a large brew system like us or brewing five gallons at a time. And it's all those variables and dialing them in. You mm. know, mash pH, mash temperature, all these things throughout the hot side of brewing. And then also on the cellaring side, Dick talked about oxygen, so important. Mm. So it's, it's really, truly, you know, professional brewing is about consistency. We, we brew the same beer for, you know, Make America Juice again every single week. And our customers are smart, which is so great. But also, if we do something, you know, that's not to spec, they would know that. And so not every home brewer, and you don't necessarily have to dial things in and be consistent, but it's really just trying to figure out, you know, all these variables and doing them as best mm. as you can to get the greatest product. For fermentation. Yes. Plastic carboys, plastic bag, <laughs> yeah. metal, like small little conical fermenters for home brewers. So what would you recommend? Working at More Beer, there's a lot of options and there's a lot of passion out there about those options mm -hmm. and it it truly comes down to what works best for you i use plastic carboys a lot i used a spidel plastic fermenters as they became popular at more beer um, glass carboys again people use them because there's less chance of infection with glass you can't mm -hmm. have any scratches or anything on the inside but i truly i made a lot of great beers i won a lot of awards and i had no infections or no issues I do have a question because I bought carboys for more beer many yes. times. Yes, sure. When do you throw them away? How many times? Plastic do you carboys? Yeah. yeah. How, how many, many beers many can beers? you make in yeah. them? It truly comes down to how you treat them. Uh, you you know, if you're being respectful to them on the inside and not using aggressive, you know, scratchy pads, mm. I would say as soon as you see scratches on the inside, it becomes a concern. But mm. if you're very gentle with them, but eventually you have to ditch them. It's a good question. I, I don't necessarily know. I, I would assume, um, as long as you're being incredibly sanitary about them, as, you know, if you let's say you made a sour or something in that carboy, it's definitely gonna be a little dangerous to move from that back to a normal mm. sack beer. But um, I don't know. Just be careful. I, I, I would say you can. I definitely had some of mine that I used for like four or five years. Mm. Um, but again, I was. The Spidel plastic fermenters, I know I'm not paid to, to sell that to sell that price, <laughs> but um, they're great in that carboys are difficult because they don't have a spout on them to get a sample easily. Mm. Um, they have a very small neck to them. So the Spidel plastic fermenters, they've got a spout. You can pull a sample for gravities, which is something you should definitely do consistently throughout fermentation. Mm. Um, but you have the ability to reach inside them. They've got handles. Um, so if you... I have another question because I buy a lot of stuff from more beer. Yes. Uh, bottle in the caps, uh, the oxygen caps. Yes. When you sanitize them. Yes. Does that lose the ability to oxidize or like not oxidize your? Beer? I don't. I don't know too much about that product. Um, I've heard that before, yeah. but again, there's so much hearsay out in the the industry. Um, I don't know. Oh man, I've been yeah. looking for an answer for the longest <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah. No, it's. Yeah, that's a good question. All right, another more beer question. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. What's the best kit to buy for the clone beer? Oh, man. Um, I definitely, in the beginning, I brewed uh, chocolate hazelnut porter. <laughs> that was in the beginning. It's a great beer. Um, but it really comes down to your preference. If you're into IPAs, there's a lot of great ones. If you're into sours, I know they have a, uh, is it Consecration? I believe they have that. And, uh, yeah. Just my own question is, mm -hmm. what beer should the first beer be? If you're home brewing for the first time, mm -hmm. what beer do you recommend? Not a lager. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just do a, do a simple beer. Do, do something where you can truly focus on, you know, read a book. How to Brew is a great one. And just try and, number one, have fun. Probably the biggest priority. But number two, just try and, you know, do something simple where... If there is an off flavor or an issue, it would be pretty obvious that there's a problem. Um, typical Take, pale ale or a blonde ale is a really simple mm, one that I always recommend. Taking on my own experience back home, don't brew like a high gravity stout. No. Yeah. Unless you want stuff on your ceiling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> happened to me. Sure. <laughs> Strong fermentation. Yeah. But it was all right. Yeah. Anyways, go. 
besides beer, mm -hmm. it's not your first time in Japan, is it? It's been a very long time. I, uh, I lived in Asia as a child, mm. and so I've traveled around, but it, it literally was, uh, I think, 95 was the last time uh, I was here. This time? Yes. What's your favorite thing about Japan so far? Oh, man. <laughs> Obviously, the food's great. The people have been incredibly nice and welcoming, and it's really pretty here. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. It's, it's been nice just to walk around and kind of purposefully get lost and explore, and there's a lot, of, a lot to look at. Any recommendations for tourists who come here, besides keeping their pocket Wi-Fi charged up? Uh, <laughs> yes, I've had that issue already. <laughs> um, if it's cold, bundle up. You should try and be as you know, out there as possible. Talk to people. Everybody's been really friendly. And uh, we did a beer crawl with uh, a few really great beer bars. Uh, Devil Craft, Tap Stand, Titans especially. Beer Maw. Uh, beer Ma. World and, End. Yeah, yeah, World Ends. Uh, I can recommend all those. Um, yeah. Well, thank you very much. No problem. We had fun talking with you. Mm -hmm. we hope to see you again next year. I hope so. Hopefully Jamil lets you out of the house. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Come by. Come by.